Got it. Is a is a state. Let, let's talk about estate planning for a minute. You're you're a wealthy woman. You have a lot of money that you'll leave behind. Is estate planning different for queer couples? For gay couples? Is there other things we should be considering? You know, on some level, it's almost easier for us. I have to tell you, be, for at least for myself and KT, because we don't have children. <laughs> so it's not like, mm. oh, who's right. going to get what? How are we going to do this? And everything like that. We have nieces and nephews and that, and we've left a considerable sum for them, but really 99% of the estate is going to charity. And I just have a belief that people can do it on their own and they should do it on their own. And sometimes when you leave large sums of money to kids, it overwhelms them. And in my opinion, sometimes ruins their life. So everybody will be comfortable but nobody's going to be able to just live forever on what we're li li living them, leaving them. So, right. you right. know, so is it different? You know, here's the thing you have to understand, Adam. Money doesn't have a sexuality, doesn't have a religion, doesn't have a race, doesn't have anything. Money is for every single person, regardless of who you are, what you believe in, where you live. It's for everybody. And I really found that out when I've traveled the world to speak in India, China, Australia, Malaysia, what, all over the world I've spoken. And the language of money is a universal language. So whether you are gay, lesbian, it doesn't matter your sexuality, how you deal with money is exactly the same as if you were heterosexual. And whether you're heterosexual or not, how you deal with money is really affected with, a, it's really affected by how you deal with yourself, right? Who, who you are and your identity and how you feel about yourself, whether you feel powerful, right? Yeah, because when you feel less than, you tend to spend more than. When you feel less mm. than, you define yourself by the things that you buy, the homes that you live in, the cars that you drive, the clothes that you wear. But when you know who you are, when you feel like you, you get it, you know who you are, you define your money, your money doesn't define you. And now we have an entire switch with everything. Because it's one thing to be powerful and to have a lot of pride in who you are. Then you have to expand out from there. Because then you have to be more than just a person, so to speak. You have to be a person who works, a person that relates to people, a person that invests, that saves, that spends. Because you and your money are one, and it's just how it is. Your money can't do anything without you, and you can't have money without you. You're the one who goes out and gets a job. You're the one who works for it. You're the one who saves it, spends it, and does whatever. So you and your money are one. And if your money isn't doing well, that's because you aren't doing well. So I always say you have to go within to see why you are doing without.